What's up, South Bay? Welcome to the freshest episode of What's Up, South Bay, where we're all about showing you what's up by uncovering hidden treasures, vibing with the local hotspots, and kicking it with the coolest peeps in town. I'm Christine Frushan, and today it's my pleasure to introduce to you Adam Kirkpatrick of Electric Head, Inc. Uh, he's one of the most... Uh, expert in the industry here in the local South Bay area, and we're going to del delve into his remarkable success and the excellence that Electric Head Inc. has brought to the world of electrical services. Adam's journey as an electrician and his leadership at Electric Head have set a high standard in the field. The company has garnered widespread recognition for exceptional service, professionalism, and an unwavering commitment to customer satisfaction. We will shed light on the driving force behind Electric Head Inc.'s outstanding reputation and the vision that has propelled them to the forefront of the industry. We'll explore how even the most complex project showcases a remarkable skill and dedication that have become synonymous with Electric Head Inc. So stay tuned. And uh, we'll look at the leader behind Electric Head and the principles that have made this company a shining example of excellence in electrical services. Welcome, Adam. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. So, no, yeah. so to kick things off, um, please share with us a little bit about Electric Head and what inspired you to start the business. Well, um, we're electrical services. Uh, commercial, residential, um, we do manage a lot of emergency calls and um, just some minor upgrades to major upgrades, whatever people kind of need. Um, what really started me on this was seeing that we needed more safety involved in the electrical work. And so my motivation to start Electric Head was to, that was just to make sure things are a little bit more safe and um, more up to code. There's a lot of old work and you know old shoddy work <laughs> that needed to be upgraded. And uh, I saw kind of a, not only a niche there, but just a need for it. And that's awesome. That's the most important thing, the safety part of what you do. And that's awesome. Yeah. That's your, your leading drive. Yeah, it can cause a lot of issues. You know, not only can your computers get shut off or, you know, get destroyed, but you can have a house fire. You can have a lot of injuries. So, I, um, yeah, so I try to I try to focus mostly on that. Mm, that's amazing. So could you share some key milestones in your journey? Um, well, gosh, I think starting – Starting this was a huge milestone. Uh, before this, I've been in the industry for about 10, 12 years, um, working with, uh, with the IBW, uh, also working on my own. Um, I think a lot of the training that we did through the IBW definitely helped um, push me into the right direction um, and also made me realize, you know, what, what we really needed to do on the residential areas to becoming a contractor was a, was a big step <laughs> rather than just being an electrician, you know, now you're, now you're managing people, managing time. Um, I spend a lot of time behind the computer, which I was not expecting <laughs> a lot of paperwork. Um, yeah, but I can still get out there and get my hands dirty and the best of me, I guess. <laughs> That's the fun part, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's the thing about going into business or management. There's always that paperwork side, the, the piece that's not quite the skill that you enjoy doing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, not it's um, it's another challenge. It's another yeah. challenge. Um, I, I enjoy learning about it, learning about the laws, the bylaws, and uh, local codes and stuff like that. It's, it's interesting. Um, it's a lot of bureauc bureaucratic um, paperwork, but... <laughs> Yeah. But it has to be done, you know, and uh, for good reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagine. So as a business, business owner, what are your primary goals for Electric Head? Right now, I, just, I want to continue um, 
kind of building the brand in a way, I guess you can say, uh, let people understand what I'm here for and what I want to do. Um, I think my goal in, as a business owner here is, well, obviously I need to make money to keep going. Right. So that's, that's a main goal, <laughs> but also to communicate with, uh, with my clients and with my customers at the safety and their, they're the priority. Um, after that is, you know, just taking care of business. Um, in the in the future, I would like to expand, of course, but I think uh, I've got time. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds awesome. So, what are the biggest challenges that you faced in growing and maintaining Electric Head Inc.? Yeah, um, balance. Trying trying to be in the field, be behind a computer, and be with your family yeah. all at the same time. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. There's not enough time in the day. And so um, I've had to make sacrifices, you know, and, and miss out on things. Um, but I think my family understands it. Um, if they know that I'm there as much as I possibly can be, Um and yeah, I'm still figuring out the balance of it still am. because it's, it, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to be a successful contractor. Um, and it takes a lot of time and effort to be a successful father. <laughs> so yeah, but I, you know, I do the best I can. Mm-hmm. So do you have, um, things that you do to try to overcome that and bring some of that balance to your family and your business? Yeah, I have some ideas. I think that part of part of the management part, right, is to bring in um, somebody that you can trust to manage some more of the business as I can kind of step back a little bit more and spend more time with my family. Um, I think that's one of the th- ideas that I have. Um, also, just kind of see when when can I stop? When is enough? And I can just step back a little bit and say, okay, no, this job's not an emergency. Everybody's okay. I can spend some time with my family. (laughs) Um, And, you know, customers and people, they understand it too. Uh, If they get a call on a Saturday or a Sunday or something like that, um, a lot of times they can say, you know, I I can't just wait till Monday. You know, I have a birthday party I need to be at or, you know, we're at the park. So, I try to try to be honest with people and let them know because they're in the same boat and same position. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. So it sounds like it's delegation and then it's, you know, this like communicating, just being honest because people are people. We all know that, you know, everyone is human. You have a job and you have a family and we're all humans, right? (laughs) Yeah. I, I feel like there's a, um, there's a persona or, there's an idea of what a contractor or a construction worker is big, tough, burly guy or whatever. doesn't care tattoos on his neck and stuff like that. But that's not what we all are. We're, we're family people. We're just happen to be, well, not necessarily, we're not all good at it, but <laughs> we like to, you know, bang a hammer and, uh, and wire stuff. <laughs> but, um, but like you said, we're, we're all just people and we all have our, um, our responsibilities. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. So electric head is known for exceptional service quality. And so could you share an example of a particularly challenging project that your team successfully completed? Gosh, they, you know, they're all a little challenging different ways. Right. Um, I just recently, I uh, was working at a, I had a call, an emergency call from, from a restaurant uh, that had lost, um, lost some of the power from the utility side. And um, they they were pretty frantic, you know, that they didn't know what was happening. Some of their equipment didn't work. Some stuff was on and off. And so um, I had asked them, it was a Saturday, <laughs> it happened to be. And I asked them, you know, is this emergency? Do you want me to come out right now? I said, yes, please. <laughs> so packed up and got over there as fast as I could. Um, luckily, it was Redondo Beach. Um, Awesome, amazing restaurant. Um, (laughs) 
And um, as soon as I realized that they had lost half the power, we I started to rearrange things to make it work for them right now. Because at, at, at the utility, I can't really do anything about it. You know, we have to contact utility and have them come out and fix it, not their part. So um, that was the challenge was to make sure they had what they needed to operate for the weekend. Um, we didn't know how long it could have been out. It could have been out two days, three days. So just uh, disconnect things that need to be disconnected, rewire what we need to rewire, and then have them set and ready to go. And it's a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of troubleshooting, um, a lot of communication like we were talking about. You communicate what do you need and how can I help you because that's what I'm here for, right? Um and once we had everything safe and ready to go, uh, we were ready to walk away and um, had a little snack there while we could. <laughs> Helps it with the restaurant, huh? <laughs> I, that's a great benefit. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. So um, I I heard of a project too that you did recently with the um you you do the connection for electric vehicle charging. Yeah, yeah, do, uh, a lot lately. A lot more. Um, I think that's a that's a part of the times we're in. Um, EV chargers are high in demand. Um, I found when can maybe a couple of years ago when they started first started really becoming popular, they were very expensive to get in, installed, and I could not figure out why people were charging that much and what. It, I did not understand my, my quotes compared to some of the other people's quotes was like half. I didn't, I was like, what, what are people charging for? Mm -hmm. I think, um, people are really just getting gouged for it. <laughs> but nowadays it's a lot easier. Um, the equipment's a lot more readily available and I think people a little bit more understand what they're looking for when it comes to car charging. Um, when it first came out, it was kind of like almost like a, like a magic thing that was kind of happening. But um, yeah, we do, we do a lot of those now. Um, yeah. Uh, even in, yeah, even Redondo beach, Manhattan beach, a lot of them popping up. I mean, it's, uh, it's the way of the future, right? Yeah. Electric cars. Yeah. Looks like we're going that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. When they have a really nice electric truck, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Ford so started all my it. equipment. Yeah. <laughs> then, I think it was last year. Did the F one fifty came out with the electric? I think the lightning. They, they yeah. Started, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's almost there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, it's a start. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you need a bigger truck than that one, anyways, right? <laughs> that's, that, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, can you provide some insights um, of your team's approach? Of, towards uh, installation, meeting those code requirements and customer satisfaction? Customer satisfaction is definitely a priority. Um, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm doing. It's a service, right? I am providing a service. I'm here to make sure that you're happy when I walk away. A lot of times um, the project is not that involved. It's not heavy. So, I just concentrate on make sure cleanliness, you know, um, make sure that you speak nicely. Don't, don't, don't talk like a construction worker so much, you know, just be, be personable and be a person. Um, and, uh, luckily I work with guys that are very personable and I, you know, I, I'm particular. Um, so like I said, cleanliness is a big thing. You don't, usually see all the work that we do inside the walls. You don't see all the work that goes uh, in the ceiling and in the attic and stuff. You see what's right in front of you after we plaster and after we clean everything up. And that's yeah. what I want people to, to remember. Um, when it comes to code compliance, that's just training. It's training, it's practice, it's studying. Um, when I studied to be a contractor, it was nonstop head in the books. Just, yeah, just make sure you know what you're doing. Um, Cause the inspector does. And when he comes by and notices that you don't know what you're doing, 
Yeah, he'll call you on it. <laughs> he'll let you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so code compliance, it just um, keep up on it too. They, they change, they change a lot. Um, there's new codes on the on installing panels that are coming in. Your SPDs have to be installed, your AFCIs, certain heights for everything. And it's just practice and doing it. And uh, for my guys, I tell them to ask questions. If they don't know, just ask a question. I'd rather you not know and know that you don't know than um, not know and just, you know, wing it. It's bad. Mm, that's awesome. Good stuff. So outside of electrical business, what are your other personal interests and hobbies? I have the kids, and that is definitely one of my my most favorite things to do, is play with the kids. Uh, when we're playing with the kids, we are playing music. I love playing music, playing guitar, and just having them bang around on everything in the house. Um, <laughs> nothing is off limits. You can play the pots and pans. You can play the colander. I don't care. As long as we're playing music and playing around. Nice. Um, um, my seven-year-old's really into playing soccer right now, so soccer is a big thing. Yeah. You know, um, going to the beach. Love going to the beach. Um, sleeping when I can. <laughs> when I can. <laughs> A couple hours of sleep is always good, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm a big arts and music guy. Um, go to the museums, local, the local shops. Uh, my girl likes to go antiquing sometimes, we do that a little bit, you know, and visit, go down to Redondo Beach and just hit up all the shops and mm-hmm. eat a lot of good food. Yeah. <laughs> we have lots of good food in the South Bay, right? <laughs> yes. Oh my god, so much, yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool. That's awesome with the music. That's I didn't know that. <laughs> it's it's uh it's been pretty consistent through my whole life. Mm-hmm. Ever since I was a kid, I always loved music and that's moved me and got me through a lot of stuff. Um and I I'm introducing that to my kids and I really want them to understand just how that's healing, you know? Music is good for you. So on a lighter note, I I think I proposed this question ahead of time, but um, if, if your business of electric head was a superhero, what would its superpower be? Lightning out of the question. (laughs) Something in electricity, right? That's what I figured. (laughs) If we were a superhero, um, you know, it'd be fun as a, maybe, maybe it's just the old man in me, but um, empowerment and knowledge, I think would be a great, um, great superhero power to let people, you know, um, feel empowered and not be, not be scared or not fear things that they don't know. How would that work though? I don't know. That's like telepathy or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Like what would the mission be? How would it, how would you do it? Huh? <laughs> yeah. How would you do that? Would you kind of like Thor and be like, ah, you are no longer afraid and you can be, uh, smart and brave. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. That's definitely a power that is needed, right? And Gosh, that's, life, the, really. that's the father in me, I think. That's what that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So before we wrap up, if anyone watching wants to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Um, You can reach out to my website. I have my phone number, email. You can text me on there. Um, website is electrichead.com pretty straightforward i'm not a graphic designer so you have to excuse the the mess on there it's pretty basic but i'm an electrician i mean that's what (laughs) that's what you're going to get um but if you have any questions about anything too you can always just text me you can um you know shoot me an email and i'm happy to help out i can I don't mind spending a little time and getting in contact with people that you need to get contact for answers. Um, it helps me out too. I learn a lot from other people's questions and I appreciate that. Okay. Very cool. And I'll, I'll add that in the notes for the show at the end. So everyone can yeah. see it as well. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. And so it's a wrap for this episode of what's up South Bay. And if you enjoyed our conversation today, show us some love by hitting that like button. And if you know someone who should see this video, please hit the share button too. And if you like knowing what's up in the South Bay, 
and you like to kick it with cool peeps like today's guest, then subscribe to the show and hit that bell notification so you'll see our upcoming episodes. Your engagement means more than you know because it really helps local businesses uh, get this exposure by telling the platforms to put it in front of more people so we can share the awesome uh, opportunities that are available in our community. And uh, if you're considering buying, selling, or investing in real estate, I'm your friendly local real estate agent and I'm happy to chat and answer any questions that you might have and help you to reach your goals. <laughs> so thank you for being with us today. And thank you, Adam, for sharing your story. It's Absolutely. so enlightening and enjoyable. Uh, and thank you everyone for being here. Shop local. And until next time, bye-bye for now. <laughs>